collecting mint on card. Some people love it, some people have no idea where to start, <laughs> like me. But in this episode, we go over all the basics. And I review a new book that helps you figure out Star Wars mint on card collecting. And I'm gonna give a couple of these away. So if you're a beginner or even a seasoned vet, you don't wanna miss this episode. Welcome back to the journey. Remember walking the aisles of Toys R Us or KB's in the 80s and seeing shelf after shelf of glorious Star Wars toys? But these days, collecting the original toys in the original packaging can be sort of a nightmare. There's so many things to look out for. So this episode is a beginning 101 collecting guide for mint on card. And even if you're not a mint on card collector, this episode might be fun to watch. And later on, I'll be going over the essential mint on card collecting book made by a company called Red 5 Designs that helps you identify and catalog what exact card back you have. And as for me, a beginner mint on card collector, some things about collecting mint on card are just super hard to wrap my head around. But this book actually makes it easy. So I'm gonna walk you all through an example of how to use this book and how it could be useful for you. And like I said, I'm giving a couple of these away, so stay tuned to find out how you can get yours. But now, get your notebooks out, cause it's time for a mint on card 101. So this episode might go over some basic terms that you seasoned collectors might scoff at. But take me for example. A year ago, I didn't know what half of this stuff was either. And I know that there is a lot of Padawans out there that wanna learn stuff like this, even if they never set foot into the mint on card arena. Well, for starters, the term mint on card. Now, mint references being pristine, but any card with the figure attached to it via plastic bubble generally is called mint on card. I guess you should call it on card if it's in bad condition, but that's not an official term. The bubble, the plastic encasement that the figure lives in. If the figure is in a box with a plastic window, yeah, that's a window. Taped, references the accessory being secured by tape inside the bubble. Unpunched or punched, refers to the hang tab. A more desirable mint on card are the ones with the hang tab preparation still intact and in perfect shape. Veins, refers to creases or folds that are either very visible or barely visible, like veins. Obviously, more desirable card backs have no veins or visible folds. Flat card, refers to waves or warps present in the card. The flatter the card, the more desirable. The more wavy or warped the card is, the more dings and overall value the card will have. POP, or proof of purchase. This is the symbol on the back of a card that has these symbols. These were used as marketing incentives for children to send in these for mail-in offers to get special figures or other collectibles. Sometimes mint on cards can have POPs that are either cut or shaved off. Country of origin, where the figure was made. Price sticker, refers to original store price stickers that are on the card. A more desirable card will not have these, but if they are, they don't really take away from the value of a card unless they have been peeled off either partially or totally and have damaged the card or card art. If a price sticker or any stickers are covering the figure bubble, that's also undesirable. And if the glue from the sticker has spread to other parts of the card and causes smears, that's also undesirable. Litho refers to the picture art, whether it's drawn or a photograph. A great litho will have vibrant colors and not appear faded. This is where reference guides come in handy to determine what a pristine litho was on first release. Edge wear refers to the condition along the edges of the card. You wanna make sure the figure is not loose in the bubble and that the head is facing forward. Because I guarantee you, if the head's facing backwards, I wouldn't want that one either. Sticker offers. These can either be on the front of the card or the back of the card. And these were either applied at the factory, printed on the card, or in the store. Blacked out Ewoks. Do they really need to be explained? But I do see this question being asked at least once a month. They are early 80s spoiler controls. They are blacked out action figures that Lucasfilm didn't want revealed before the Return of the Jedi movie release. They were later unblacked after the movies, the release. In the upper left corner is the product number. Each figure was assigned a number. So for instance, while the Bespin guards were given the same name in the release, they have designated numbers assigned to them by Kenner. And under the bubble, on the edge of the bottom racetrack of the figure are small numbers. These are only on Empire Strikes Back and beyond, not on original Star Wars cards. These are figure and card IDs. For instance, on this Return of the Jedi Chewbacca card, we see this number, 0175-22102. We can separate out the numbers like this. 0175 is the Return of the Jedi code. 
221 is the figure code, and 02 is the card back code. And here's a guide that you can screen grab. To help me keep creating content like this, please become a YouTube channel member with memberships starting as low as 99 cents a month. You'll get early access to videos before the public does, members only live streams, extra entries into all giveaways, and special member shout outs. Just hit the join button below the screen and welcome to the academy. And now, maybe the most confusing and the most important aspect to collecting mint on card? Identifying what card back you have. And you may have heard collectors referring to them as 12A backs or 31B backs. Let's go over what this is and how to identify them. First, we have to start at the beginning of the collection line and go through some of the different cards that you're gonna see and especially the backs of the cards and what that means for the collectability and the price. And we're gonna go over the different factories later in the episode. We're gonna focus on the Kenner USA releases. The 12 back is the beginning of the mint on card run. It's called a 12 back because of the art that's pictured on the back showing all the figures that came in the first wave of 12. And this is the only card art that features featured characters as drawings and not actual photos. So Luke, Leia, R2-D2, C-3PO, Chewbacca, Darth Vader, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Han Solo, Stormtrooper, Jawa, Sand People, and the Death Squad Commander. The main thing to know, the lower the number on the card back, the more desirable and potentially more expensive it's gonna be. So these 12 backs are the most sought after because they are the oldest release of the Kenner line. But here is the first nuance. This is a 12A card back, and this is a 12B card back. So what's the difference? The main difference is the explainer graphics on the saber tip. The 12A has a very short one millimeter saber tip in the photo, and the 12B has a longer three millimeter saber tip. Other than that, both cards are identical. It's these small nuances that affect the collectability and the price. And it's very important to understand these nuances of the card backs to properly master the art of mint on card collecting. And across the board, being able to identify 12A, 12B, 12C, 12D, all the way to 79A. And it all starts with identifying the card back first and being able to differentiate these. But do you really have to memorize them? What if you're at a toy con or a toy shop and you're really not sure? Well, you have a phone and knowing these reference sites can help you out when you need a quick look at the cards and which ones they are. So get out a pen and paper and write these down. And the first site I would use is called the Star Wars Tracker. Now, it's a paid site, and no, they aren't paying me to say their name. <laughs> they should. You guys listening? They have every known version of the cards listed with their variation number. They don't have photos of all of them, so you may have to supplement those items with other reference sites. They also have current price listings from past eBay sales to get an idea of market values. And I use this app both on desktop when I'm researching and when I'm on the hunt in the wild on my phone. Another site that does a great job is called the Jet Jedi Temple Archives. They do a great job of laying out the site in a visually pleasing and easy to navigate site. Now like the Star Wars Tracker, they don't have every mint on card here, but at least they list the number of releases. This site, ran by the Star Wars Collector's Archive, has a massive database and is a great place to go. The photos are limited, but the information they provide is great. And there's always Facebook groups like Star Wars Vintage Cards Front and Back Combination Reference Group. <laughs> it may be hard to say 10 times fast, but don't worry. All of these links are in the description of this video. But the book that I'm about to go over from Red 5 Designs later in the episode, it pretty much takes care of all this. And it gives you all the info you need to ID your cards. And if you're enjoying the content so far, please hit the like button. That does support the channel. And also, please consider subscribing. And please visit the PadawanCollector.com where you can see blogs, bonus material, and you can visit the Collector Depot for accessories that you may need for your collection. And going back, to the original Star Wars cards, here's all the card backs in order, released from 1978 to 1979. Wave one, 12 backs. Wave two, 20 backs. And the wave three, Boba Fett, 21 back. In the Empire Strikes Back, released from 1980 to 1982, there was the wave one, 31 backs. Wave two, 32 back with Yoda. Wave three, 41 backs. Wave four, 45 backs. Wave five, 47 backs. And wave six, 48 backs with four lom. And again, it's important to know the number of card backs as that affects cost and the initial desirability. The figures on a lower number card back generally are more desirable than a higher number from the same figure. And this may all seem like basic stuff, but if you didn't know, like I didn't a little while ago, now you know. 
That's why I'm here. So now, we get into The Return of the Jedi, released from 1983 to 84. Wave 1, 65 backs. Wave 2, 77 backs. And Wave 3, 79 backs. And now we go into the last line of toys, the Minton Card Power of the Force line, released in 1985 with the single wave of the 92 card backs. And the Power of the Force cards came with a coin in a sealed plastic bubble. And there's also differences in card art among different factories and region releases. Palatoy cards will have their logo on the card and will often have different number of figures on their debut card. For instance, the debut card on the Bespin Guard A debuted on Kenner's 31 A backs and on Palatoy on the 30 A backs. Here's an example of a Mexican Lily Letty card, a Spanish PBP, Japanese Takara, Brazilian Glasslight, French Meccano, Italian Harbert, Australian Toll Toys, Canadian Kenner, and Argentinian Top Toys. And if I leave any of these out, just add to those in the comments. And let's reference the Tri logo released towards the end of the Return of the Jedi run in 1983. All of the European countries to distribute these action figures switched from their own regional card backs to the more inexpensive to print Tri logo cards. When sales became poor in Europe, these cards found their way to Canada and the USA retail stores. On the Tri logo card backs, 79 figures are shown, although it says collect all 70, with Paplu and Lumat blacked out. And missing from these cards are both Bespin Guards, Greedo, Hammerhead, Snaggletooth, Cloud Car Pilot, Power Droid, and Forlom. Now, the best way to dive into collecting mint on card is just to dive in. And right now, I'm only focused on getting the Return of the Jedi cards. So today, I'm gonna show you what I bought from a trusted seller and a person who I've bought mint on cards from before. And I think when you're buying mint on cards, it's important that you buy from trusted sellers. So if you need to get references or whatever you have to do to make yourself comfortable, to make sure the seller is legit, and to make sure the item that they're selling is legit, do that. And if you're unsure about a card back's validity, hopefully before you buy, ask for pictures or take screenshots and send those screenshots to trusted collectors or even to collection groups. And you want a trusted seller because when you start venturing into mint on card, all of these aspects, not just in the figure, but now in the complete package become important. So those aspects of collecting and forming relationships with those sellers, that becomes important as well. And for starters, you wanna buy these mint on cards for the right price, at the right condition. And just like there's reproduction accessories for figures, there's also reproduction mint on cards. And here's some easy ways to tell. Look for a waffle press in the bubble attachment to the card. Also, on the back of the card, you can see a slight raised indentation where the card was factory pressed. Reproductions don't have these. Also, the card back will have a matte, non-high gloss finish and a texture to it that you can often see in the light of pictures. A reproduction will oftentimes have too much of a modern glossy appearance and be smooth to the touch. This is obviously easier to spot in person. And there are other ways to tell, but the best way is to use the reference sites that I listed earlier in the episode. Because you're gonna want reference photos to compare to what you want to buy or to what you have. And when you buy from an online store or a seller, you wanna make sure that that seller is gonna take the time and the care to properly package that MOC no matter what the price is. And I've gotten mint on cards from Matthew before and it was packed super nice. So I know that when I get items from collectors like him, I don't have to worry about packaging. And this mint on card looks absolutely gorgeous on first look. The figure looks amazing and is resting in the bubble as he should be with only the slightest of a head turn to his right. But his backpack accessory is as it should be. The bubble is only slightly yellow and for these Return of the Jedi cards, this is a great color. Not totally clear, but like I said, only slightly yellow. And on Kenner cards, the bubbles are always yellow because of the fire retardant that was used to treat the plastic. In other factories, such as Lily Letty, the bubbles are very, very clear. 3PO's head has caused a wave in the bubble at the top, and the bubble is fully attached to the card very nicely, and the hang tab is still unpunched and secure. But there is some price sticker residue on the Return of the Jedi logo, so if I was to get that graded, there would be points 
taken off from that as it takes away from the card's natural look. The card lays very flat and there are no veins that run through any of this card. The edges in some areas have somewhere but very little and the color of the litho art is not faded and is in great condition and the proof of purchase is still intact. Overall, this is a great card and if I was to get it graded, I would guess it would score no lower than a 75. So now I'm gonna use my new guide from Red 5 Designs to figure out which exact card back that I have. The book is a high quality print with excellent design on the front cover with raised gold lettering and inside the attention to design continues. Let's be clear about this book. It's not a book that you flip through and enjoy a read. It's a tool and it has a definite mission to help you identify exactly which mint on card you possess or are on the hunt for. As you open the book and enter into the first pages, it sets up what the book is and how to use it. But rather than read it, I'm gonna show you firsthand. So I'm using the mint on card of 3PO that I just got. So let's go through the process to see exactly what I have here and its historical significance. In this book, you're always gonna start on page nine with question one, what branding is on the back of the card? And looking on our back, there's no branding at all. So we're gonna follow the black tab where it says, go to page 164. The next question, how many figures on the back? Well, we can see that it says 77. So with that info, we look on the next page and follow the tab associated with 77 figures and we are told to go to page 206. Now the next question, master or sub? And there are two options we have here. Does the back have no stickers added to the back or does it have one or more stickers added? In this case, we see that we have no stickers. So let's go to the next page and follow the no sticker tab that tells us to go to page 208. And here we are, card identified. And I'm in the possession of a 77M or master. 77 is the number of figures on the reverse side of the card and the M stands for master. Now had this card had offer stickers or anything else, I would have gotten a different outcome. And with the more complicated card backs like the original Star Wars or Empire Strikes Back line, this book is a useful tool to precisely ID what exact card you have. Whether you're shopping in the wild, going to an estate sale that is vintage, or a vintage toy shop, or a toy buying convention, this book is a great tool for pros and Padawans alike. And in reviewing this book, I found it super easy for me to navigate through everything. And after I ID'd this card back, I went ahead and went through my small but entire collection of Minton cards and I ID'd those as well. The layouts I think are extremely well thought out and the extra historical information that you get on each card as you ID is pretty priceless. And I would rank this book as a must have for any serious collector and any serious mint on card seller and buyer and a person who's considering entering the vintage Kenner mint on card space. And like Red5 says on their website, this book isn't really a book that you flip through and read like a coffee table book. It's really something that you wanna place in your backpack or put in your collection room to reference it almost on a daily basis. And I am giving away two signed copies of this book. Not signed from me, signed from the authors at Red5 Designs. All you have to do is type in hashtag Red5 in the comments to enter. And you also have to follow me on Instagram at the Padawan Collector, because that is where I'm gonna be announcing the winner. So if you're a subscriber, you have a chance to win. And if you're one of my channel members, I'm doing a separate giveaway to give you guys better chances to win. So if you wanna join that group, hit that join button below this video. And you have until September 1st, 2022 at midnight Pacific Daylight Time to enter. I'll pick the two winners with a random name generator and I'll post the winners on Instagram on Saturday, September the 3rd, 2022 on my Instagram posts. After you're verified, I'm gonna ship you this book with no shipping charge to the winner. And to get your copy of this amazing book, head over to red5.co.uk. And this 3PO deserves an acrylic from Ian's Displays. So let's cross off this gorgeous card and figure from our list that we got from Matthew on the Vintage Alliance Facebook group. And we got that for $184.12 with shipping and taxes included. And thank you for going on that quest with me to better understanding collecting mint on card. As a beginner, I need all the help I can get and this book and some other reference sites are gonna be key for me to understand that. And I placed a link to Red5 Design's website down there in the descriptions of this video. And thanks to Red5 Designs for allowing me to review this book and also give you guys some signed copies 
so you can try it out for yourself. So if you found this video interesting, please hit that like button. That does support the channel. And if you wanna see more Star Wars collecting content from me, please consider subscribing. And also, hitting that notification bell so you know when episodes go live. I post videos every Sunday with bonus content throughout the week. And as always, my friends, thank you, and I'll see you next time. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.